high. The only reason I'm making this video is because um, I just wrote way too many text comments. So for utility's sake, I'm just going to state them all here because I just had way too many things to say. And as for a video, I mean, it's going to be a short video. It's not, I don't have that many things to say. Um, I'm not making this huge review of this topic. I'm just pointing out an aspect that I'm willing to share. Um, I guess anyone can make this insight, but I guess I have my own point of view on it because I'm a Christian. Um, so those arguments are nonsense. I mean, the ones that uh, Thomas Aquinas gave. And um, I suspected as much. I mean, I haven't heard all of these scholars' arguments, scholaric arguments for God, but... Um, every single argument I've ever heard of is nonsense. Um, like I wrote on my comments, I said most arguments for God are weak anyway, and I admit that as a Christian. Um, the only reason to believe in God, I have to say, would have to be through personal experience, beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, because no jump in logic from no evidence to something so specific as God seems possible to me. The problem with that is that even if I have personal experience that anyone would admit as persuasive if they were in my shoes, it's useless to convince anyone else that doesn't trust me completely. Um, it's useless for that cause to convince anyone else. Um, then there's the fact that there's no obvious evidence uh, for God, uh, something that I can take and persuade someone else with, like documentation or you know scientific research or something. Um, uh, I wouldn't say that it's not possible for that to happen, but for some reason, uh, well, because I'm a Christian, um, but for some reason, it just hasn't happened. Um, take even the miracles described in the New Testament as though they happened. Even if they did happen, could someone from that time period find evidence that a miracle occurred? Sure, if they were there. Um, that's first-hand experience. You saw it happen yourself. Um, as long as you know there wasn't any window for you to be tricked into thinking that it was a miracle. I mean, if, if you if you're you know pretty sure in yourself beyond reasonable doubt that it was true fine like you have your own proof for it but it's not proof that you can tell other people because it's first-hand experience only no one else could if you missed the party no everlasting bread basket for you if you weren't there for when the sick man was healed the best you'll get is an anecdote um, my point is that even laid out uh, in a few spots in the Bible that making a big show and um, is that making a big show and leaving footprints isn't anything the Christian God is interested in. Um, you're lucky if you find God without already practicing biblical tenets flawlessly, uh, in which case it's written that God will reveal himself to you if you do that. Um, but there's so many misinterpretations of those tenets, so good luck with that. Um, and by misinterpretations, I mean uh, there's just so many different people that say that no these this chapter means this or this means that um, it's I think it's obvious that uh, past a certain point um, like only like you can't just say all of them are valid and it's the same thing with religions you can't just say all of them are true only one of them can be can be true and it also follows that you will only um, that God if he exists I mean from your point of view if he exists will only um, work for you know the Christians that actually do get uh, and practice his word as he intended it to be practiced not just like any Joe Blow interpretation so like I said there's so many misinterpretations so good luck with that um, bottom line the Christian God is just one of the most difficult things to to prove um, the Bible encourages people to have faith and practice the scriptures so that God can show himself to them as a reward for their effort but there are just so many religions and cults that demand that you do that same thing. Uh, many don't even promise confirmation of their God's existence. They tell you to wait after death, then you'll find out. Um, most atheists will find themselves at a fork in the road with a nearly impossible amount of paths to set out on. I mean, I'm looking at this from the point of view of an atheist. I mean, I have to because um, Christianity and many other religions are evangelical. Uh, I can't just say, okay, well, it's fine for me. I have whatever experience or experiences that um, that I'm uh, capable of accepting as as enough to uh, 
find myself persuaded, maybe not sure that God is real, but persuaded more than not that God is real. Um, but that's not how it is for uh, for who's the person that, I don't know, me or anyone else is preaching to. I mean, I don't preach that much at all. I mean, I'll talk about this when people bring it up, but um, the thing is, is that uh, that's the situation that you are when you start off, when you know nothing of God or know nothing of what is, if a God is real or not real. There's just so many religions, and it's brought up so many times, I mean, I, I agree, there's just so many religions that ask you to invest so much that uh, I, I understand that it's, that you just can't, like, it's, it's, it's very dangerous, I mean, and it's very risky to devote your life to only one of hundreds that could be true or not true. So it, it's understandable for Christians to be frustrated as well uh, because they're trying to, you know, <laughs> you're, they're trying to evangelize, but they shouldn't be surprised if it's so hard to do that, to proselytize. Neither should anyone else for that matter. Atheism is just the most obvious thing to accept. Um, and perhaps the easiest. Um, I'm a Christian and I have no problems admitting that because it's the truth.